You are here because you want to improve your calculus test and projects grade. This video will walk you through everything that you will need. So get out just a plain sheet of paper. A calculator is also fine if you need it. Um, if you want to have Desmos sub for some reason, whatever, just to check your work. But you will need to make sure that when you submit this, it's going to be submitted in person. So you are just going to hand me your sheet. That sheet should be neat and numbered, obviously with your name on it. And I need to see all your work. Now, during this video, I'm going to be having numbered problems throughout. So any problem that is numbered, that is going to be what that number should be on your paper. And that's the problems you're going to do, the ones that I will take for a grade. Anytime it just says practice and is labeled with letters, those are the ones you can just sit back and watch and or take some notes on. You do not need to turn those in. So let's get started. I already have the first one ready for you. Here is problem number one. You need to write out the derivative rules, the six trig functions, e to the u, the natural log of u, and these three inverse trig function derivative rules. Here are the first set of practice problems. We are going to practice simply finding the derivatives. Um, after we do this, uh, we will go into integral, so pretty simple. So first, we're going to find some derivatives. If we take a look at a, this derivative is very simple. Um, it's simply going to be that two out front is going to stay there. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it'll be negative two sine of x, and that's it. We don't have to use the chain rule here because our inside function is just x. In part b, we're taking the derivative of the cosine of 2x. So finding that first derivative, we're going to be doing the same general idea that the derivative rule for cosine is negative sine. So it's going to be negative sine of 2x. So we keep the inside function the same. And using the chain rule, we then have to multiply by 2. That multiply by 2 can just go right out front. So it's negative 2 sine of 2x. So please note the difference in parts a and b. In part C here, we do have a product. Now, mathematically, we have products a lot of times, and I know I've said this multiple times in class, but in this case, we have a product that requires the use of the product rule when differentiating. And that's because each factor in our product, our u and our v, both contain the variable, in this case, x. So finding f prime here, we'll use the product rule. So we'll take the original first, which is the sine of x, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of cosine we've already established is negative sine. Then we'll add the original second, which is cosine of x, times the derivative of the first. The derivative of the sine of x is cosine of x. Cleaning this up, we'll have negative sine squared plus cosine squared. And that is our first derivative there for part c. In part D, I'm going to rewrite this so we can see sine squared is really sine squared. Now please note this is not equal to the sine of x squared. Those are different. This is the sine of x quantity squared. This is the sine of x squared. This one is equal to this one, not this one. So we'll erase it. These are not the same. So I simply rewrote, and so I didn't take a derivative just yet. To take the derivative, we are going to be utilizing the power rule here. We have something squared. So in order to take that derivative, I'll bring the two out front, and then that something stays the same and is raised to one less. So that's a first power, which I don't need. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside using the chain rule. So the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x, and therefore our derivative is two sine x cosine x. I have four more example problems for taking derivatives. So we'll start with part E. We want to find the derivative of the tangent of e to the 2x. So this is definitely a chain rule problem because we're not just taking the derivative of tan x. Our inside function has a derivative that's uh, more than just one. So overall, the rule for tangent is its derivative is secant squared. So we're going to take secant squared and not mess with that inside function at all. So it's a secant squared of e to the 2x. Using the chain rule, I then have to multiply by the derivative of e to the 2x. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2 e to the 2x. So writing this in a nicer way, we usually will put um, the trig function last. So 2 e to the 2x 
secant squared of e to the 2x. In part f, we once again have a product. This one's a little bit more complex than the previous product rule we did. Um, we are going to take the original first term times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Then for our second term in the product rule, we're going to take the original second term, so e to the x squared times the derivative of 5, or x to the fifth, which is 5x to the fourth. Now cleaning this up, in our first term, I have an x to the fifth times a 2x to the first. So that'll give us a 2x to the sixth, e to the x squared. Then plus, this will be 5x to the fourth, e to the x squared. If you wanted to go one extra step and factor out, you can. Both of these have a x to the fourth, e to the x squared in it. So if we factored that out, in our first term we'd be left with 2x squared, and in our second term we'd be left simply with 5. So both of these are completely fine ways to write the first derivative. For these next two, in part g we have a quotient and we know that we need to use the quotient rule here when taking the derivative because both parts of our quotient, the u and the v, if that's how you want to look at it, both contain that independent variable x. Low d high minus high d low all over the square of what's below. So we have low d high, which is 1, minus high d low all over the square of what's below. Cleaning this up a little bit, our first term is the natural log of x, and our second term is just minus 1, all divided by the natural log of x squared. It's the whole thing squared, it's the x is not just squared, so parentheses around that. In part h, we have an arc sine rule, so we want to make sure we're following our derivative rule for arc sine or sine inverse. I put the rule for the derivative um, of the arc sine of u right here. So this builds the chain rule in. We can see that our u value in this case would be 2x, and then therefore the derivative of u or u prime would just be 2. Now we do have to be careful when we are going to be squaring u. When we square 2x, we don't just get 2x squared. We get 4x squared. We're taking 2x times 2x. We're squaring it. So we end up getting a 4. So that is just a common error that I have seen. All right, so following this, we know that our u is 2x, so we've already established that u prime is 2. In our denominator, we'll have 1 minus 4x squared. And that one is a pretty simple one, and that's our first derivative. Here are numbers 2 through 11 that you should have written down, numbered, neat, show all the work to get the derivative for each. So go ahead and pause the screen, write these down, and find each derivative. For number 11, this is a tangent line problem. If you need to look back at how to find the tangent line, you have plenty of resources available to you. Have fun. We are now at the second part of the video, focusing on integration. So number 12 is to write out all of these integration rules, the six trig functions, the power rule for integration, right? And the power rule for integration is integrating x to the n where n is not negative 1. This is where it would be negative 1. I have a u instead of an x. It doesn't really matter. And then I want you to write out the integration rules for these three inverse trig functions as well. Now I have a lot of integration practice because there is so much more that we can do with integration than derivatives. Uh, let's take a look at the first one. And actually, before we even take a look at A, I want you to think about all of the sort of tools in our toolbox for integration that we have so far. We can just do straight up integrating. If something fits one of the integration rules or those patterns that we know, we can just go right into the integration. But a lot of times we want to use some sort of mathematical manipulation, like a U substitution. Um, we just have to sort of start to be able to look at these different integrands and see what is going to work best. So a lot of times when we have kind of a more complex grouping of terms in parentheses inside um, maybe a trig function under a root, we want to think about a potential u substitution. 
Now, if you're thinking about a u substitution, you sort of want to think a couple steps ahead. Whatever you want to let u equal, in this case, if we let u equal 2x minus 1, we need to think about if du is present, or in the very least, if we can make it present through just a little bit of manipulation with numbers, not variables. So if we let u equal 2x minus 1, du would simply be 2 dx. I have 1 dx here. We can handle just some constant. We can handle changing that around. Whereas if this had been an x squared under here, du would involve a 2x in some way, which we don't have. And we can't just make a variable appear or really manipulate that in that way. So that's what we want to be thinking about with a u substitution. So let's try this one with a u sub. Let's let u equal 2x minus 1. And then du would simply equal 2 dx. Now I only have 1 dx. So in order to just get 1 dx, I need to divide both sides of this by 2. So I'll have 1 half du equals dx. Going into my actual substitution here, uh, I'm going to replace my denominator with the square root of u. And then this 1 dx is going to get replaced with 1 half du. The 1 half can just go out in front of the integral. And you can put the du here or here. So now what we have is 1 half the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. So let's write it like that. So this is 1 half the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. And this is a simple power rule for integration. Our power rule for integration says that anytime we have u to the n or x to the n, whatever, um, so long as n is not negative 1, we can use that power rule for integration. So we have to add 1 on to our exponent. So we'll get a positive 1 half. And that's the same number that we divide by. So we're dividing by 1 half. Now instead of writing dividing by 1 half, I'm simply going to write a multiplication by 2 to keep things simple. Then of course we need our plus c because we have an indefinite integral. Anytime we use a u substitution, this will just be 1. Anytime we use a u substitution, we want a back substitute. So this is really 1 u to the 1 half or just the square root of u. So the square root of 2x minus 1 plus c. If you did end up taking the derivative of this, you should get back to your original integrand. Those, that's a good way to check and see if you did something right. Let's take a look at part b. We see that we have a sine squared and a cosine in here. Well, sine and cosine are like BFFs because their derivatives are basically each other. We just keep going in a loop when finding the derivative of sine and cosine. Also, their inside function, 3x, it's the same. Let's think about a u substitution for this. Well, I can see that if I let u maybe be the sine of 3x, I could get a u squared in here. And then the derivative of sine is, in general, cosine. So we have the du kind of built right in. So let's try it. Let's let u equal the sine of 3x. We don't need to let it equal sine squared, because if you think about that, if we let u equal the sine squared, our du would be far more complicated. Our du would have a 2 out in front, bringing the 2 out in front, and then it would still have the sine of 3x, and we'd have to use the chain rule. We just don't have all that here. So let u be just the sine of 3x, and then this would just be u squared when we plug it in. Now du, using the chain rule, is going to be 3 cosine of 3x. We can deal with that 3, and then dx. So I'll divide by 3. So we'll have 1 third du is the cosine of 3x dx. So from here, we can rewrite our entire integrand in terms of u. So the sine squared of 3x would just be u squared. And then this cosine 3x dx gets replaced with 1 third du. So the 1 third can go out front, du. Now we're just using the power rule for integration once again. I'm going to add 1 to this 2 right here, and that's what I'm going to divide by. So I'm dividing by 3, and I also had that initial 1 third. So that's that, and this is my dividing by 3. And then u is going to get cubed plus c. Back substituting and cleaning up a little bit, we'll end up having the sine of 3x cubed or sine cubed of 3x plus c. Remember that with exponents on trig functions, we put the exponent like in the middle. Okay, our next one, number C. I'm just going to move this one half out front. 
and kind of reevaluate what I have. This is a pretty simple problem. This is actually just like problem A. Um, and so this is really just one half the integral of x to the negative one half dx. And then we can just go ahead and use the power rule for integration again. So I'm going to add one. I'm going to divide by that one half, which means multiply by two. My plus c because I have an indefinite integral. So this is just the square root of x plus c, no u substitution required. Part d is our first definite integral. And so because this is a definite integral with these values here, we are going to get a numerical answer out and not an answer um, with like an X in it. So we can't split this up. I know sometimes that's a question students will have. We can't split it up because we only have a common numerator. We don't have a common denominator. So we cannot split this up. That is not mathematically legal. Um, instead, we want to look at this in a different way. Again, think about the U substitution, you know. Usually with U substitution, if we don't have parentheses or something inside like a square root or something like that, we would like to let U be the denominator. So thinking ahead, if we let U be X squared plus one, DU would be two X DX. We have X DX and we can deal with that too. So let's use a U substitution here. I only have x dx, so I'll have to divide both sides by 2. So replacing this, I'm going to have my integral used in the denominator. x dx is going to get replaced with 1 half du. And now, I can't write 0 and 3 here just yet, um, but what you can do really is you can change the 0 and 3 to be u values rather than x values because now we're in terms of u. Or if you want to back substitute at the end, you don't ever have to do that, and you can just use 0 and 3. This is a pretty simple transition to go from x to u values, so I'm just going to change them to u values. So my u of 0, I'm thinking about that down here, it'll just show my thought process, u of 0 and u of 3, what will they become? Well, u is the x squared plus 1, so I'll take 0 squared plus 1 and get 1. If I do the same thing with 3, I'll get 9 plus 1. So my new limits of integration or bounds are 1 and 10. Now, when I have to integrate this, I don't ever need to go back to x. I don't ever have to do that because I have everything now in like the world of u. So everything's in terms of u. Now, this is not the power rule um, for integration. This is u to the negative first. That means it's a natural log. So this is going to equal 1 half the natural log, oops, 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of u, and no plus c because it's a definite integral, so we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 10. So by the first fundamental theorem of calc, I'm going to first plug in 10 and then subtract plugging in 1. The natural log of 1 is just 0. So this ends up becoming 1 half the natural log of 10, or if you want to move that 1 half up using the power property of exponents, 10 to the 1 half power is the square root of 10. So you could also write this as the natural log of the square root of 10. Here's our next batch of four. We have a lot of integration today. Um, in part E, we want to integrate the tangent of 4x. This is a pretty simple um, integration one, we are just going to use the integration rule for tangent. And the integration rule for tangent is negative the natural log of the absolute value of the cosine of u or whatever our input is, um, and then plus c. So using the rule for tangent, I am going to do a u substitution here because I don't just have the tangent of x, I have the tangent of 4x. So I am just going to have u equal 4x. And then du would just be 4 dx. I only have dx in there, so I'll replace that dx with 1 fourth du. So replacing this, we'll have the integral of the tangent of u, and then the dx will get replaced with the 1 fourth du. So using my rule for integrating tangent of u, it's going to be negative the natural log, so I'll actually put the negative out in front of the 1 so negative one-fourth the natural log of the absolute value of the cosine of u, 
u is 4x plus c. Okay, over in part f over here, we do actually have one where we can break the integrand apart into two separate terms. And that's because as opposed to the other problem where I sort of mentioned that idea, we now have a common denominator. So we can write this as the integral of x squared over x minus 4 over x. You can also write it as two separate integrals. It's completely up to you. Um, and then let's simplify it a little bit. So x squared over x is simply just x, and then 4 over x is just 4 over x, and then dx. Now from here, we're just thinking about integrating two separate terms, you know, integrating them separately. So the integral of just x to the first dx, we're going to use the power rule for integration. So I'm going to divide by 2 because I'm adding 1 to 1. So I'll get 1 half x squared. And you can quickly use the power rule to take the derivative of this and see so you just get x. Then this is a natural log because we have x to the negative first. So this is going to be minus 4, the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So when you have that common denominator to more than one term, break it up. Integrate each term separately. Now we have part g. So this one we notice is a rational function. We cannot break it up because we have more than one term down here. Um, and so we can see that the numerator is larger than the denominator. Think about when you have an improper fraction like, I don't know, 65 over 8, right? I'm just making up a random fraction that's improper. So like the numerator is bigger than the denominator like this, a quadratic over a linear. Um, we, could, we could do long division to figure out what this answer is, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We didn't spend a ton of time doing this in class, but it is an important technique. So we're actually going to do some long division here because the numerator is um, a larger degree than the denominator. And doing this long division, x times what gives us x squared, so x. And then we multiply through by that x, so we'll get x times x and x times 1 and put that there. So we'll have x squared plus 1x. Then we subtract that. x squared minus x squared cancels. Negative 3x minus 1x is negative 4x. Bring down the plus 2 and repeat the whole process. So x times what will get us negative 4x. That answer is negative 4. We multiply through by negative 4 to both terms. So we'll have negative 4x and negative 4. Then we subtract. That first term is 0, as it should be. 2 minus negative 4 is 2 plus 4, so that's 6. So our remainder is 6, so we'll have 6 over x plus 1. That is our new integrand there. So we now have this integrand, so we can simply rewrite our entire integral. And our integral is going to be x minus 4 plus 6 over x plus 1 dx. Now, looking at this, we have three terms that we can integrate separately. So integrating each term separately, we will integrate x to the first. We actually did this in the previous problem. So we'll get 1 half x squared using the integration power rule. The integral of negative 4 dx is just negative 4x. And this last one, this is actually going to be a natural log. However, I'm going to show it a little bit more in depth. So I'm just going to show you that this, I'm not going to integrate it yet. So it's plus 6, the integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx. So I just want to show I haven't integrated that term yet, but I did integrate these two, which is why I dropped the integral symbol. Now from here, I want to show just why it's a natural log using a u substitution. If we let u equal x plus 1, our denominator, then du is simply just dx or 1 dx. Doing that is going to allow us to rewrite this as 6, the integral of 1 over u du, which is 6, the natural log of the absolute value of u, and then of course plus c. So that's going to be 6 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. Getting our very final answer of putting all those terms together, we still have these first two terms, so we'll have 1 half x squared minus 4x plus 6, the natural log 
of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. Okay, on to the last one on this page here. We have the integral of <laughs> secant x tangent x all divided by secant x minus 1. Again, when we see secant and tangent together, you know, those two are kind of married in the same way that sine and cosine are with derivatives. Um, it's a little bit less of a pattern, but, you know, the, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. So, boom. We can see that if we let u be secant x minus 1, du would literally be this right up here. So, let's do a quick u sub. So, we'll let u equal our denominator, secant x minus 1 and du will equal secant x tangent x dx. So we have this built in. This is going to end up being the integral of 1 over u du. And again, that's a natural log. So the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, the natural log of the absolute value of secant x minus 1 plus c. Let's keep going with a few more uh, integration problems. So in part i, we'll take a look at this one right here. And if we sort of think about our, you know, our options for how to solve this one, how to integrate it, if we do a u substitution, let's think about what that would look like. We would clearly want to make u 1 plus e to the 2x. Let's think about if we have du as part of our integrand. It looks like we do because du would involve e to the 2x. It would have that in there. It would be 2 e to the 2x dx, which we have. We could just get rid of the 2. So this is actually just a u substitution. Now it almost looks like it could be an arctan because um, it almost looks like a squared plus u squared where u could be e to the x um, and then squaring it we'd get, get that. But let's think about if that were the case. Um, if we let u be e to the x and then u squared would be, you know, e to the 2x, right, with rules of exponents. But then our du would be just e to the x dx. And we don't have that. We have this e to the 2x up here. So this can't work. So it's not an arctan. It is going to be just a straight up u substitution. So let's let u be our denominator, like we have said. And again, I'm sort of going through my thought process because that's how we learn with these. We just practice. Um, so our du is going to be 2 e to the 2x dx. So I don't have 2 e to the e x dx. I only have the e to the x, e to the 2x dx. So I have to divide by 2. And now we can just do our u substitution here. So the integral u is in our denominator. The e to the 2x dx is going to get replaced with 1 half du. So once again, I'll bring the 1 half out in front, and we'll have 1 over u du. So this is a natural log, once again, when we um, actually integrate it. So we will have 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of u. I'm just going to go right into the back substitution, um, which is 1 plus e to the 2x. Now, e to the 2x can never be um, negative. so we are going to drop those absolute values, and then of course plus c. All right, looking at our next problem over here, j, um, we see that we have a definite integral this time, so we will be plugging those values in eventually, getting a numerical answer. Um, this looks like an arctan, it looks like the setup for arctangent. So remember arctangent, we have, um, a squared plus u squared, and then if you have du, you should have du up here. So do we have that? Let's see. Our a value should be, in this case, 3, since 3 squared is 9. Our u value is simply just x, because u squared would be x squared, and then our du would just be 1 dx. So we do have that set up for arctan. So we can just straight up go right into the integration process. So this is going to be 1 over a arctan, or tan inverse, however you want to write it, of um, u divided by a. So we're going to have x over 3. Now we don't have a plus c. Again, it's a definite integral, so we want to evaluate. 
We'll evaluate first at three, so of one third, and then I'm just gonna write this tan inverse because it's less things to write. Um, then three over three would just be one. Then minus one third tan inverse of root three over three. So using our knowledge of the unit circle and the knowledge of um, the range of the arctan function, we know that the arctan of one is going to be pi over four. So this is one third times pi over four. And we'll have minus one third times the tan inverse of root three over three, which is pi over six. So from here, we're going to have pi over 12 minus pi over 18, getting the common denominator of 36. This would be three pi over 36 minus two pi over 36. So it'd be pi over 36 is our answer. Okay, moving on to our next couple problems here. In part K, we have the integral of t over 16 plus t to the fourth dt. Notice when we have like two things being added in the denominator, we want to maybe think arctan first. That's sort of what that looks like for arctan. So again, I know we just did an arctan problem, but just as a quick reminder, arctan is when we have this. And that's going to equal 1 over a, the arctan of u over a plus c. So we do have that right now. In this case, our a value would be 4, and our, our u value would be t squared, since when we square that, we get t to the fourth. So thinking about that, if our u value is t squared, then our du would be 2t dt. So we almost have that. We just have to account for that too. So we can totally do that here. So let's rewrite this integral so it looks just like what we want it to look like. So we have it as 4 squared plus t squared, and that's squared. Then we want to make sure we have, if this is u in here, t squared, then we want to make sure we have du up here. So I need 2t dt up here. You can put the dt kind of where you like. Now, since I multiplied this integrand by 2 to make it fit, I do need to, to kind of even it out and put that 1 half out in front so I'm not changing the meaning of it. And now we can just proceed. So proceeding ahead with this, we're going to go right into our integration. So I'll have 1 half just because that's on the outside. Then using my arctan, formula here for integrating, I'm going to have 1 over a, my a value is 4, tan inverse of u over a, my u is t squared, my a was 4, and then plus c. Cleaning this up, we'll just get 1 eighth, and there we go, just an indefinite integral, again with arctan. Okay, taking a look at our final one here in part L. Um, this one sort of looks like it could be an arc sine. Let's think about it. First, I'm going to just write out what arc sine is so we can recall. Arc sine is going to be the integral. In the numerator, we have du. And in the denominator, we have the square root of a squared minus u squared. So again, a is just like a constant, um, and then u is that function of x. So in this case, we sort of have that. Like, let's say we had, okay, a is clearly going to be 1 if this is the case, and then u would be x. All right, but then if u is x, then what would du be? du would just be 1 dx. We have two terms in the numerator here, and they have a common denominator. This is a common denominator because this is like 1 even though it's two terms under the square root, it's one big square root. We can actually separate this into two separate integrals. Let's do that and see how it looks. Now that we have our two separate integrals, we can see that actually this integral fits the mold for sine inverse, and this one doesn't. Um, so again, we wanted to make a is 1, u is x, and then if u is x, then du would simply just be 1 dx, which we have here. We actually have this. This is the sine inverse and then a 3 out front. So we can go ahead and just do that one first. So this is going to be 3 times the sine inverse 
of u over a, so x over 1, so I'll just actually write it as x, and then our plus c. Now, this first one here does not fit that mold. Let's think about what kind of mold that one fits. Since it's not arc sine, it might be a simple u substitution. Think about what you would want to let u equal here. 1 minus x squared. If you allow u to be 1 minus x squared, then your du is going to be negative 2x dx, which we basically have here. We can make that work out. Let's do that. So our u will be 1 minus x squared. Our du is negative 2x dx. And really what we can do to make things less complicated is we can simply just bring this 4 out front. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll erase that. And we'll bring the 4 out front. And then there was still an x here. Perfect. So now I have x dx. So I can divide both sides by negative 2 here to get that. So I'll have negative 1 half du is that x dx. So now we can just do our straight up u substitution in here. So I'll have 4 still out front. Then I have that integral. This is going to be the square root of u in the denominator. That x dx here is going to get replaced with negative 1 half du. So negative 1 half will go out in front. So doing this integral here, I'll have negative 2, the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. And we've done this multiple times in this video lesson already. So I'm using the power rule for integration. So I'm going to have negative 2. I want to divide by 1 half, so I'm multiplying by 2 u to the positive 1 half. Um, I'm going to bring all this down at the end, so that's where my plus c is going to go. So this is going to be negative 4, and then this is the square root of u, so 1 minus x squared. I'll bring down the rest of the problem, which we had already integrated. And there we go. Here are your integration problems. So go ahead and pause the screen, get these all written down, and these are the last ones you need to solve. Good luck, have fun.